Oh, hey there, it's uh, Graham Cooper here from uh, Cooper & Cooper Investment Property Solutions. Uh, welcome to this uh, video and thank you for watching. I uh, just wanted to uh, talk about uh, today, you know, some of the issues, some of the challenges that uh, property investors have and, uh, you know, how we overcome those things. Of course, as uh, property investors ourselves for around 50 years, we, uh, you know, we've learned a thing or two and we're we're very happy to share that with you. Okay, so um, of course, one of the major things that uh, people sometimes have a problem with is they go along to their regular uh, bank, uh, you know, one of the big four maybe, um, and to start inquiring about getting a loan. And of course, you know, the, the major banks, you know, pretty much uh, deal with um, the general retail market. And, uh, and so that's, for the people who, uh, you know, don't necessarily want to go to any real effort to to find the best deal, and uh, and so you know you will become a victim of, um, I guess, the general retail market, and that's uh, that's the paying the interest rate and and um, and agreeing to the terms that the, the general big four uh, banks want to offer you. Uh, now, a more experienced investor, of course, will will use uh, a a finance broker and uh, that's a great idea because uh, what is the best way to get the best deal do some comparables okay do a feasibility on uh, a particular interest rate or a particular lender that uh, is offering some uh, different terms to those majors and of course uh, so the the benefit of dealing with a finance broker is that they can as we say shop uh, for the best deal for you and uh, and that way of course you will be dealing with um, a lot of uh, what we call or what is termed as non-bank lenders and there are many many of them uh, you know in this uh, in this country in Australia and of course overseas even more so uh, and those uh, non-bank lenders are look a lot of them are actually are actually owned by the major banks um, they trade under different names and that's a way for them to, uh, for the big uh, four to um, to lend out any excess funds they might have if they're not meeting their uh, their monthly or weekly budgets in terms of the lend. Because of course, if they have a few billion dollars to lend, and they have a slow month, uh, then you know then their shareholders are not particularly happy because that money is not out there working. And remember, we've talked about how your money must be working for you and the banks are no exception you know they're in the money business and so their money has to be working for them and for their shareholders every second of the day okay remember we talked about some time back the velocity of money well you know your money is no different it needs to be out there it needs to be working and you need to have your money working for you because you've already worked for your money you put those hours in but of course you know the story doesn't end there it's important for your money to keep working so coming back to financing we talked about non-bank lenders you know um, a lot of people don't realize also that solicitors uh, lend money you know the solicitors lend money th from their customers so you know there might be some particularly uh, wealthy uh, customers of theirs and they have some funds uh, in savings account and accounts and they know of course that the the big four again you know are not necessarily going to give them a good interest rate um, uh, you know because times get tough uh, particularly in the lending uh, in, in sorry in the uh, uh, savings department at the moment if you were to put money in the bank you know in most cases you'd be lucky to get one percent or if you were really lucky maybe two percent uh, and um, look after tax of course because uh, if you make any money it's a profit and you've got to pay tax on it uh, and after the cost of living, and I don't know if you've noticed <laughs> lately, the cost of, for instance, groceries, um, you know, it's amazing uh, how these things continue to rise in, in cost, and yet there's not really a lot of inflation around, but there you go. Uh, you know, the manufacturers have to um, keep the doors open and pay the overheads. So, yes, um, solicitors and money. Yeah, and, and solicitors, of course, if they're going to lend money for their clients, they're going to uh, generally be uh, at a rate a bit more expensive than the banks. 
than the major banks, and um, and you had to be prepared to to pay that. And uh, I can remember, you know, maybe twenty years or so ago, I was that we were purchasing a property and we. Uh, looked at the cost of the money and I remember talking to my accountant and the accountant said well you know it's going to cost you seven and a half percent interest and uh, you know those were the days you know some of you might remember when the interest rate was 18 percent and more but anyway um, yeah so I said to my accountant at the time listen uh, uh, I, I have to put this to you because you're a man of numbers um, if, uh, if the capital growth on this property exceeds the interest rate, then, then I'll be ahead, won't I? And of course, you know, being in the real estate industry myself, as an investor and uh, as an operator, I was aware that, uh, that the capital growth was, um, was, was very good. In fact, we were talking about 2001 and the, there was a property boom on. So, um, so, so I ignored my accountant's uh, advice you know, and sometimes if you know what you're doing, then you know have 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 the courage to uh, to believe in yourself and take action, and and that's what we did. And um, I said to our accountant, "Look, I'll come back to you in 12 months, and let's let's compare <laughs> compare advice and actions and see where we stand." And of course, um, in that particular case, you know, I certainly had picked it right on the on the spot, and. Uh, that particular property went up by 17.5% in one year. And of course, I was, I was paying an interest of 7.5%. So was I ahead? Of course I was. Okay, so these are the things that, you know, that you need to take on board. And of course, we have the answers for you there. So we can assist you to, to find all those special deals and to, you know, get those best uh, terms and uh, do all the comparisons and of course as you would have if you've seen our other videos um, you know we talked about our feasibility spreadsheet uh, that's you know step one for us and uh, we do that for all of our customers all of our clients uh, so we do all the figures first so that you know what you are getting involved in and you you know the the, the projected uh, situation even over a 10-year period so, you know, there's no fear then about the numbers because you can see it all in front of you, as I said earlier, in black and white. And that's very important, right? Get the figures right, you know, get the terms right, uh, be borrowing from the correct uh, lender. You know, these are all very important things. And these are all gr things that, that, uh, that I personally, um, from Cooper & Cooper, can, can, uh, can show you how to do. Okay, so um, just uh, showing you something here as well. This is our, our e-book, uh, and this is also a brochure that we can give out to our investors and our early prospects. So um, as you can see there, uh, our motto, because you can't see it behind me on the big signs, it's a bit lower down, but what does it say? Lifestyle design through property investment. And that's exactly what you'll be doing. You'll be des designing your future, designing your financial future, as well as your lifestyle future by investing in property. So it's Graham Cooper here from Cooper & Cooper Investment Property Lo Solutions saying uh, thank you for watching. Please uh, hit the like button on the video there and also the notification button because then you'll get an update on any other videos uh, that we do. There are uh, approximately 36 videos out there uh, and, uh, and I would really appreciate if you can uh, educate yourself with uh, the subjects that we've covered. Okay, so um, in signing off, I say don't forget, go to our website, uh, www.cooperandcooper.com.au, fill in our contact form, and uh, by all means, subscribe to our newsletter, and we look forward to uh, communicating with you soon. Okay, stay safe and stay well. It's 2021. Let's make it a fabulous year for you. Bye for now. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye.